Hello Sigmas. Today we shall discuss the problem of a solid cylinder rolling down an inclined plane. Now it may not have been a cylinder. It could have been a ring, a disc, or even a sphere, or it could have been a hollow cylinder. But I'm not going to do those. I'm going to do solid cylinder in this problem and. I'm going to leave the other cases for you to do as a homework. So as I've already told you in this problem, we have a solid cylinder and this solid cylinder is rolling down the inclined plane with some angular acceleration alpha. Now when I say rolling, I mean pure rolling. That is we are going to consider the case of pure rolling so this uh, solid cylinder is a pure rolling or rolling without a slipping right that is what pure rolling means a so pure rolling means uh, rolling without slipping on this uh, inclined plane and uh, what we are supposed to find that is what we are searching for is what is going to be the acceleration of this body and uh, the second thing that we want to find is let's say this uh, body which is uh, a solid cylinder it uh, rolls down some distance so let me quickly copy this okay so as you can see here the cylinder has rolled down some height. So if initially I release the cylinder from over there, then its velocity is zero over here. And once it has a roll down, let's say some height h, so it has a descended by some height h, then what is going to be its velocity after it has a descended by that height h so what we want to find is what is going to be its velocity after descended by height h so we want to find what is going to be its velocity after it has some moved down some height h now you are going to take away two things from this video first is that you're going to see that I'm going to solve the first question, which is what is going to be the acceleration of this uh, solid cylinder using three different methods. So what you're going to learn is that there is no single approach to a certain problem. You can solve the same problem in several different ways. And the second thing that you're going to learn is I'm going to use the method of angular momentum and uh, torque that is the expressions for angular momentum, torque and moment of inertia to solve the first question. I'm going to use the work energy theorem for rotational motion to solve the second question. So you're going to learn is why are we using the method of angular momentum and torque for the first question and the method of work energy theorem for the second one. So which method to use for which problem and which method makes a certain problem easier than the other method. That is what makes this problem really, really special. And that is why I have taken this problem. Now, both of this method, which I just told you right now, the method of angular momentum and talk and the work energy theorem for rotational motion, we have discussed them in our previous video. So if you have not checked that video out, then do check it out for sure because our solution to this problem is going to be completely based on what we have learned in our previous video whose uh, title i guess was the energy of a rotating body so do check that uh, video out before you watch this one and uh, if you have a hard time uh, searching for that uh, video then i'm going to leave the link in the description so you're going to find the link to that video in the description as well as uh, in that button on top that looks like an I, the info button. So let us begin by discussing the first problem. That is, let us uh, find the acceleration of that body. And as I promised you, I'm going to use three methods to solve uh, this problem. That is, I'm going to use uh, three methods to find the acceleration of that body. So let me begin with 
the method number one. Now, what causes the body to roll? It is friction. The torque provided by friction causes it to roll. So there is obviously friction acting on this body. And let us say that the friction is acting in this direction, F. The small f, letter small f, is frictional force on the body. What other force is acting on the body? Gravity, obviously, that is what is bringing it down the slope. So there is going to be gravity in this direction, mg, where capital M is the mass of the body, where this body has a mass of capital M, which is the solid cylinder. And uh, if the inclined plane has an angle of theta, then you know that the component of mg in this direction, as we have already discussed uh, for the case of uh, a block of mass on the wedge, that the component of mg on that direction is uh, going to be mg sine theta. And hence, the equation of motion of uh, the body, which is the solid cylinder, is going to be ma which is mass times the acceleration of the cylinder is going to be equal to W sine theta, the net force, which is going to be W sine theta minus uh, the frictional force. So this term as a whole is the net force on the body, which is equal to mass times acceleration. This is the equation of motion or uh, the Newton's second law. Now, as I've already told you, what is causing this body to have an angular acceleration alpha? It is the torque due to friction. So the torque due to friction, what is it going to be? F into B, let's say, is the radius of this cylinder. So let us say this cylinder has some radius B, small b. Then the torque due to friction on the cylinder is uh, going to be F times B, right? Force times uh, the perpendicular distance. And uh, that is going to be equal to what is another expression for torque. It is I naught into alpha, where I naught is the moment of inertia of the cylinder. Also, I have told you that we are considering the case of pure rolling. What does that mean? That means that the acceleration of the cylinder is going to be equal to B times alpha, right? Acceleration is alpha times the perpendicular distance again, which is the case for pure rolling. So let me number these equations. This is equation number one. This is equation number two. And this is equation number three. So let me first use equation number two in equation number one to eliminate the frictional force F. So we have ma is equal to w sine theta minus f. What is f? f is nothing but i naught alpha divided by b. But what is alpha from equation number 3? Alpha from equation number 3 is a upon b, where a is the acceleration. So we get w sine theta minus uh, i naught a divided by b squared. Now here W is the weight of the body, which is mg, but I've just written it W so that I don't have to write mg again and again. Now what is the moment of inertia of a solid cylinder? The moment of inertia of a solid cylinder, I naught, is equal to mb squared divided by 2. And uh, what is uh, W? W is nothing but mg as I told you. So I'm going to put both of these in this expression. Then I will get ma is equal to mg sine theta minus b squared is going to get cancelled. So what I'll be left with is ma divided by 2. Now as you can see, capital M gets cancelled throughout and I will be left with uh, a plus a by 2 is equal to g sine theta. So 3a by 2 is equal to g sine theta. And hence, A is equal to 2 by 3 G sine theta. So this is what we were searching for. This is the acceleration of the solid cylinder. Now here we have solved it using a single method, but let us solve it using another method. So method number two. Now in method number two, we are going to use the method that is we are going to use the expression for torque that we learned in our previous video. That is, we learned that the total torque of the body is the torque of uh, the various particles of the body about the center of mass that we call the tau naught plus r cross 
F, capital R cross F, which is the torque of center of mass itself, which is the torque on the center of mass itself. Now, what is the torque of the body about the center of mass? What is tau naught? We have already discussed what it is. It is nothing but B into F, F into B. Plus, what is the torque on the center of mass? What is the torque on the center of mass? So, the center of mass is again experiencing two forces as I've already told you. First is mg sin theta, the component of gravitational force along the inclined plane and the second is frictional force. Now, you might say it is also experiencing the normal force but as you can see, the normal force is going to be balanced by the other component of the weight which is mg cos theta. That is normal force is going to be upwards and mg cos theta is going to be downwards and they are going to have equal magnitude and they are also directed along the center of mass. That is they are acting on the center of mass. So the torque due to these forces are obviously going to be equal to zero. So the torque on the center of mass is going to be due to mg sin theta and f. So we are going to have mg sin theta again minus f which is the net force on the center of mass as we had also discussed over here where is it yeah so you can see that that is the net force on the center of mass mg sin theta minus f times the perpendicular distance which is again b so as you can see we are going to be left with mg sin theta sin theta into b that is going to be the total torque on the body what is going to be the angular momentum of the body now again we have already discussed the expression for angular momentum in our previous video. It is nothing but I naught omega, which is the angular momentum of the various particles of the body about the center of mass plus the angular momentum of the center of mass itself, R cross capital M into capital V. Now I naught again, we already know what it is. It is MB squared divided by 2 times omega plus what is the angular momentum of the center of mass? What is R? And uh, we have a cross product and actually we want its Z component like we did in a previous video. So what is uh, going to be the perpendicular component along the Z direction? So that is uh, going to be B obviously, right? That is what the perpendicular distance is as we have already seen into, these are going to be scalars because we are looking at the Z component. So B into M and what is going to be V? V is going to be B omega again that is something that we already saw V is equal to B omega and why is it V equal to B omega because we are considering the case of pure rolling again because of pure rolling V is going to be equal to B omega and A is going to be B alpha right that is what pure rolling means and hence what we get is MB squared by 2 omega plus mb squared omega so that is equal to 3 by 2 mb squared omega now as you know torque is the rate of change of angular momentum and hence if we compare equation number 4 with equation number 5 then equation number 4 should be the time derivative of equation number 5 and here all this is a constant what varies is omega so what is the time derivative of omega which is alpha and hence what we are left with is mg sin theta into b dot b is going to be equal to 3 by 2 mb squared alpha because the time derivative of omega is alpha and uh, hence what we can do is we can find alpha so m m is going to get cancelled one of the b's is going to get cancelled so alpha is going to be equal to 2 by 3 g sin theta divided by b. So b alpha is going to be 2 by 3 g sin theta and yes you might have guessed it right b alpha is nothing but a. So again we find that a is equal to 2 by 3 g sin theta as we have found earlier. So you have already started to see that 
we can solve the same problem using several different methods. And in fact, we are going to discuss another method. And actually, it's not a method that is different from method number two. But you can see that if I shift my origin, here I had considered my origin uh, somewhere else on the plane. But if I shift my origin to the bottom, that is, if I shift my origin over here, earlier I had considered my origin to be, that is for method number two, I had considered my origin over here. And then we were looking at the center of mass. I had considered my origin at the tip of that wedge, the top tip of that wedge. And we were looking at the center of mass from over there. So we were getting the perpendicular distance as D. So that was obvious that I was doing that. But over here, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to shift the origin to over here, right? This is going to be our new origin. And now we are going to discuss the motion of the body. So you can see that if I shift the origin, then it will become even more straightforward as to how I get the answer. So a proper choice of origin can actually reduce a lot of work. That is what I'm going to show you in method number three, that how important it is to choose a good location for the origin of your coordinate system. So now we are going to discuss method three. So if I shift my origin to the bottom, to the point of contact, then what is going to be the torque on this solid uh, cylinder? The perpendicular distance is B from there. And uh, there is only one force, which is mg sine theta, because as I told you, N and mg cos theta are uh, acting along the line, which is they are acting along B. That is, they are acting along the center of mass. And hence, uh, the torque due to that will be zero. So the only torque that we have is mg sin theta. So torque is mg sin theta. See, here we had a big expression for the torque. That is, we had to solve for the torque of the center of mass also, this one. And then we got this mg sin theta into b. But here we are getting directly mg sin theta into b. This is the important of a proper choice of your coordinate system and the proper choice of the location of the origin of your coordinate system. It makes a problem really really simple what is going to be the moment of inertia of uh, the solid cylinder about the point of contact now since we are looking at torque from the point of view of the point of contact we also have to find the moment of inertia about the point of contact so the moment of inertia i is going to be i naught plus mb squared now if you are wondering how i got that i have just used the parallel axis theorem which we have derived already in our previous video. So I'm going to leave the link to that video too in the description. Now it's not compulsory to for you to know the derivation to understand what I've done, but you should know how the various expressions uh, come about in physics. That is, how are you so sure whether the parallel axis theorem actually works and how do you even derive it? So the derivation to parallel axis theorem is already done in one of my previous videos, whose link I'm going to leave in the description as well as in the i button on top of the video. So using parallel axis theorem, I get i equal to i naught plus mb squared and uh, i naught is mb squared divided by two. So I get three by two mb squared. Now again, since this is a pure rotation, we will have a equal to b alpha. Now alpha is Nothing but what is alpha? Alpha is going to be torque upon the moment of inertia, right? That is how you define torque. Torque is equal to I alpha. So alpha is going to be torque divided by the moment of inertia. And hence what we'll get here is B tau divided by I. Now if I substitute tau from over here, let me call this equation number, what is it, five, six. So let me call this equation number six. So when I put equation number six in, let's say equation number seven, then what I'm going to get is B, what is short, mg sine theta into B. So I'm going to get B squared, mg sine theta divided by I. What was I? I was three by two mb squared. So three by two m into B squared. M and M is going to get cancelled. B and B is going to get cancelled. So I'll be left with again 2 by 3 G sine theta is going to be our acceleration. Isn't that amazing that we can solve the same problem using so many different methods? And here I have shown you just 
three methods to solve this problem. And as a homework, as I told you, you are going to solve the same problem. That is, you are going to find the acceleration for a sphere, let's say, or a, a ring or a disc or even a hollow cylinder. Okay, so since we are done with the first problem, let us move to the second problem. What was it? We want the velocity of this body after it has descended through a height h. And as I've already told you, we are going to use the work energy theorem for a rotational motion to solve this problem. Okay, so let us discuss it. So now we are going to discuss our second problem. So first I'm going to use the work energy theorem for uh, translational motion. So that states that force into displacement, which is the work done, right force into displacement is uh, equal to half m v b squared which is the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy that is the work done is uh, equal to the difference in kinetic energy now what is the net force we know what the net force is the net force is w sine theta now remember w is the weight of the particle minus the frictional force times the distance. Let us say that it has covered a distance L when it descended through a height H. Let me clear things up over here. So let us say it covers some distance. So this is the distance that it covers. And let us say that distance is nothing but L. So if that distance is L, then force into displacement would just become the net force into displacement would just become W sine theta minus F into L. We know that its initial uh, velocity is zero. So I'm going to get the net force into the displacement to be equal to half m v squared. This is the V that we are trying to find. Now using simple trigonometry, you can see that capital, sorry, small l, here I've used small l. So you can see that small l is going to be equal to what? This is h, this is theta, and hence you can easily see that small l, uh, where can I write it? So small l is uh, going to be equal to h divided by sine theta, right? You can easily see from over here, this from this, you can easily see that small l uh, is going to be h upon sine theta if you use in simple trigonometry because sine theta is just going to be equal to h divided by l adjacent upon hypotenuse. So we have sine theta equal to h divided by l or l equal to h divided by sine theta. So I can use this over here. So I can use that expression over here. What will I get? W sine theta minus f into h divided by sine theta is equal to that. And hence I'm going to get w into h minus f h divided by sine theta equal to half capital M V squared. Next, what we are going to do is we are going to use the work energy theorem for rotational motion, which we have derived in a previous video. So if I use that, I will get the torque times the angular displacement is again the change in kinetic energy. Now, initially it did not have uh, any angular velocity because we leave it from rest. And hence again, similar expression to translational motion, this one we are going to get. So torque into angular displacement theta is uh, equal to half I naught omega squared, which is our rotational kinetic energy as we saw in our previous video. Now, what is torque? Torque is force times the perpendicular distance. What is the force on that body? The force is the frictional force. Now you might say, why are you not considering the net force? That is because here we want the reason that is what is causing the body to rotate. Here we want the rotational energy and what is causing the body to rotate is only friction. So I'm not going to consider the net force, but here the energy is going to be due to frictional force alone because that is what is causing the body to rotate. So I'm going to get F into B force, which is the frictional force into the perpendicular distance times theta is equal to the rotational kinetic energy. Now what is B into theta? Again, this is pure rolling. Here we have used all three expressions for pure rolling. That is, we have X equal to R theta. Then if we differentiate it, we get V equal to R omega. And if we differentiate that, we get A equal to R alpha. So this is what we get for pure rolling. 
So using this over there, what we get is f into x by x, I mean displacement. So the displacement as I, we have assumed is small l. So it is uh, equal to half i naught omega squared. Now again using this omega is equal to v divided by r and r here is nothing but b right that is what our perpendicular distance is so i will get half i naught v squared divided by b squared now we can put this back into what is the number six seven eight so let me call this where is it yeah so let me call this equation number eight so if in equation number eight i can put what f into l is going to be here h upon sine theta is nothing but l remember i had written l as h upon sine theta so again writing h upon sine theta is l i will get w h minus f into l over here so i can write f into l as this half i naught v square upon v squared i can put this in equation number eight so let me call this equation number nine so putting equation number nine in equation number eight what are we going to get we are going to get w h minus what is f into l f into l is half i naught v squared divided by b squared is equal to half m into v squared v squared and hence uh, w into h is going to be equal to what is i naught i naught is m into b squared divided by 2 so i will get half m v squared plus what will this becomes when i put i naught equal to m v squared divided by 2 the b squared and b squared cancels and i will get mv squared divided by 4 and hence if you solve this you will get 3 by 4 mv squared now w is nothing but mg so mg into h is equal to 3 by 4 mv squared the m will cancel and we have found what v is or let us say we have found v squared is going to be equal to 4 by 3 gh Taking the under root, we can find the velocity or you can leave it uh, as it is. And hence you can see that using the work energy theorem for rotational motion, we can find the velocity of the body when it has uh, descended by a height h. And that completes our problem. We have solved both of our problems that we wanted to discuss in this video. And obviously this was a very important video as important as the previous one was because you saw that how we can approach the same problem in many different ways and how we can use different methods to solve different problems and where one method makes problem easier to solve than the other. And also we learned how important it is to choose our coordinate system properly and also to locate the origin of the coordinate system to make our problem easy. So that was all about this video. If you enjoyed this video, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video. Do share it with your friends. And if you have any queries, then leave them in the comments. Next time, I will be back with another important video. Until then, see you. Goodbye. Thanks for watching.